This is Jeremy Lickness with Deep Sky Workflows, and this is a short video that I'm going to cover two topics. One is planet processing, one is bulk operations. Now, this is not planet processing for advanced imaging. This is really targeted towards Stellina owners or people who have a scope that doesn't process a full planet. What do I mean by that? Let me go into blink. I always blink my images before I use them and we're going to open up a folder of some captures that I did of Jupiter we're going to go into this date get accepted and grab all these images and then we've got the blink screen here now it's showing washed out because it applies a screen transfer and these are actually already stretched we can unstretch it and you can see yeah we get this Kind of blurry view of Jupiter right here and the moons are so low contrast we don't see them. I'm going to step through this really quickly and just make sure all my frames are good and for example so you see that blurry frame we're going to just take that and go into our Jupiter folder and we're going to reject that so let's create a new folder Call it rejected. Select that folder and get rid of that image. And then we've got another pretty blurry one, so we're going to do the same thing. And there's another one. And this one is not even showing anything, not sure what that capture was, so we'll get rid of that. So now we should have kind of a blurry Jupiter jumping around. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to stop the blink. I'm going to open one of these images. We're going to go into raw Jupiter, the date, accepted. I'm going to look for one that's kind of in the middle. Let's say this uh, 24 sequence, and eh, it's not perfect. But notice this image is 768 by 520. I want to make it a little bigger, and I want to do that to all of the images before I stack them. What I'm going to do is go ahead and run my resample process right here. and bring it over and we're going to pick this view and I'm going to make it four times as big just so I have a better working space so I'm going to process that now this would be a bit tedious to do to all the images so what we're going to do is two steps I'm going to make what's called an image container which is a way that I can manipulate multiple images with the same process all at once. I'm going to give it a base directory of that accepted folder. I'm going to give it an output directory of processed. We'll select that folder. And then I'm going to add my files. And I haven't saved the one I'm at, so I'm actually going to include that. So now I'm going to just drag this onto the surface, and I have an icon there. For that image container. Next I'm going to create a process container and this is where I can apply multiple processes. So I'm only doing one process now but I wanted to show you the concept of how you could do multiple steps if you wanted to. What we're going to do is we've got this new process container and it's empty right now. So we can take our history explorer Look at the history of the image we had, and we can see steps. Now imagine there were multiple steps. I only have one. I'm going to drag it in here. So now I've got that step. If I had a step two, I could drag step two, step three, and I can have multiple processes that are ready to apply at the same time. So we can close out the History Explorer, and I'm just going to take this, drag it onto the image container, and we can see processing and resizing all of my Jupyter images. We'll let that run through. 
and it succeeded in all 51 images. Now I'm going to combine the images together and you can see the single image looks a little blurry like this. Let's go ahead and go into script utilities and use a Fourier transform. This is this registration here, Fourier based image registration. I'm going to select that reference one that I pulled up that was 24. And then I'm going to add the rest and I'm including 24 again. You may or may not want to do that. I don't really care because it's averaging. And I'm going to correct for rotation and scaling in case there was some shifting and I'm going to click OK. So now it's going through and it's basically aligning all of these images together. We'll let it spin through to do so pretty quickly. And what we got is this nice aggregate image right here. Still a little smooth, but that's okay. So I'm going to take my screen transfer function and use screen transfer to take a look at what I've got. Notice I've got these moons here that we want to draw out. So let's go ahead and crop this. I'm going to do a dynamic crop. Try to figure out why my dynamic crop is not. There we go. And we'll set it on the image. And I'm just going to take the edge in, catch just the edge of that star. We'll bring it in here. Bring this edge in. Catch the edge of that moon. Bring this up here. So I know it's pretty panoramic. We could actually, I guess, square it up just a little bit. Just make it nicer. Go ahead and check that. And take our screen transfer off. So how do I get those moons out? It's a good question my parrot wanted to answer. I'm going to use a tool called Binarize. So let's go into Binarize. What Binarize does is it either colors it white or black based on a cutoff. So what we can do is preview this. You can see we've got kind of the red. I'm going to just slowly take this down. You can see it expands out Jupiter. I'm going to keep going until I see the moons appear. And I'm going to probably have to manually key this. So we'll go 19. We'll go 18. Let's do 15. And let me just move this. So I want that third moon to appear. So let's try 10. 10 is too much. 11. 12. So 12 looks good. It's got all four moons. I'm going to apply that. And I actually am going to make a copy of this. And I just made a mistake. I binarized the uh, actual image. What I wanted to do is make a copy of the image and binarize it. So that's okay. What we can do is go into our history explorer. Take our binarize, drop it under there, apply the same command, and then I'm going to clone the clone. Now I have two because one of these I'm going to use for the moon and one of these I'm going to use for the planet. So I'm going to get my clone tool, clone stamp, and it complains because my dynamic crop is still active. That's okay. Go ahead and get clone stamp. And let's make it pretty big size. Um, let's do 250. That might be too big, but let's see. We'll control click. Hello. There we go. Yeah, that's way too big. That's why I wasn't seeing it. 
So we'll take it down to 50, real quick, and boom. And then we're going to call this Moon Mask. Oh, I've got to apply my clone stamp and disengage it. Then I can use pixel math to create my planet mask. So what I'm going to do is open up pixel math. And my equation is going to be the target minus the moon mask. So I'm taking this and subtracting out that. So it should just leave me with the planet itself. And then the other thing we can do is maybe blur these a little bit. So let's stretch them. So we're going to go to morphological transformation right here. And dilation will grow it just slightly. So I'm going to go ahead and do dilation and I'm going to apply it on my moons. That grew them ever so slightly. And then I'm going to go and use convolution. Go ahead and blur them somewhat. Give them smooth edges. Do the same thing to the planet. Okay, now we have our masks. So the first thing I want to do is bump the contrast of the moons. I'm going to set my moon mask. You can see the background's protected. The moon's completely unprotected. This is what we want. We'll go into a curves transformation. We're going to do a preview, and then I'm going to take the luminance, and I'm just going to raise that luminance. I can see the moon starting to come out, so we'll probably need to apply this a few times. So I'm going to apply it, apply it, apply it, and probably that's good for the moons. Now the next thing I'm going to do is increase some of the fidelity of Jupiter. So there's several options for that. First we want to select our planet mask. So we're not affecting the moons. Now you can see the planet. And we might have to trim the edges of the mask. I don't know. And so there's a few tools in the toolbox. Those include Unsharp Mask is one. Local Histogram Transformation is another. I should say Equalization. And these two fortunately provide previews. And then the one that does not provide a preview is HD Multiscale Transform. Let me give you an idea of, of what these do. So let's zoom in and let's look at Unsharp Mask. So notice how, I don't know if this is showing up in the video, but if I toggle, you can see blurry, sharp, blurry, sharp. So that's actually a good step. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And the preview is going to show what happened if I applied it twice, which I'm not going to do, so we're done with that. Let's actually take advantage of the sharper image to go into curves and bring out some of the saturation. We don't want to do this too much, but what we can do is reset this, go into saturation, up it up slightly, and just draw out some of those colors. I can bring the luminosity up a little bit brighten it just ever so slightly. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Then let's see what local histogram can do for us. So this basically takes a look at the contrast between related points. You can tell it 
how much of the image to look at. If I increase it or decrease it, contrast is where you see the biggest change, but high contrast can create a lot of noise. Let me just make sure my mask is the right mask still. And then you have amount to play with. I'm not really seeing much on this, so I'm going to close this out. And then last but not least is HDR multiscale. So let me show you what it looks like with two iterations, which is the lowest number. And that is definitely not what we're looking for. We can say preserve hue, try the same thing. And still not very good. But if we bump this up to say 5 and run that, now you can see it's starting to draw out even more detail. And let me take off Preserve Hue see what that looks like. All right, so that's our toggle is before, after, before. Let's even take this up to 8 and see what it looks like when we go that high. Okay, that's obviously not an option if we do Preserve Hue. That's also not an option. So let's do six, and I'm going to try just one more combination, and that's the lightness, which I don't like. Let's just do preserve hue. I think it was five. We actually got the best result. And for sake of being thorough, actually, I like four the most. And if we do it twice, and it becomes a little too washed out. So there you have it. This is um, Jupiter, and what I started with looked like this. What I finished with is hopefully a little more clear and with some moons. And again, this telescope is not really designed to take planetary pictures. But it's good to maximize what I have and show you some of the features of Pixinsight. Thank you.